Did you know there are 24 chapters in the Gospel of Luke? 24 chapters. So if you were to read one chapter a day in the month of December, by Christmas, you'd have it read. And hopefully know a little bit more about the one we're waiting for and preparing for. I know it's December 8th, but if it sounds like you want to do that, you can catch up. So, to be leaders by example, Jennifer and I have decided to do this. So every night we read one chapter of Luke. And it started out wonderfully, and it's still going wonderfully, but that first chapter of Luke, there is so much going on. So much going on. The Annunciation, and the conception and the birth of John the Baptist, the Annunciation and the conception of Jesus in the womb of the Virgin Mary, which, by the way, is not the conception we are celebrating tonight. Tonight, we are celebrating the Immaculate Conception, the conception of Mary in her mother's womb, her mother Anne. Her conception in her mother's womb being free from original sin so that the king of glory could have a suitable vessel to come to earth in. That's what we celebrate tonight. When we talk during the creed and we say that by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. That's the incarnation. And then when Jesus was actually born of the Virgin Mary, call that the virgin birth. Little catechesis for you tonight. Anyway, back to chapter 1 of Luke. Gabriel, the angel. He's a busy, busy angel in chapter 1. He's paying people visits. And at the very beginning of chapter 1, he pays a visit to Zechariah, who is an old temple priest. And he visits him, and he says, I got some news for you. I know you're childless. I know you're older, but behold, your wife Elizabeth is going to conceive and bear a son. And this boy is going to be something else. It's going to be John the Baptist. And Zechariah, he questions God. And he says, how shall I know this? How shall I know this? And for this moment of doubt, the angel strikes Zechariah mute and most likely deaf as well until the birth of his son. Right after that, Gabriel pays another visit to this little Jewish girl, about 14 years old, and he says, I've got news for you. And he tells her what's going to happen, and Mary questions. She says, how can this be? How can this be? But she is not punished for her questioning. She's actually praised and reassured. So as we were reading this, Jennifer said, what's up with that? They both questioned God, and Zechariah got punished, and Mary didn't. I thought, that's a good question. I'm going to look into that. Because it sounds like the objections from both the parents-to-be are similar. And they might be in words, but in actuality, there is a difference. Here's the difference. Zechariah questioned something that God had done before. There was a precedent there. Women in their old age, through the power of God, had conceived children. The most famous probably is Abraham and Sarah. Sarah was 90 years old when she conceived Isaac. Nothing is impossible for God. This had been done before, and Zechariah as a temple priest, he knew that, or at least he should have known that. But he questions, and he doubts, and he asks for a sign. You gotta be really careful when you ask God for a sign. Because he got one. Now Mary, she didn't doubt if God could do it, or could God do it. Her questioning was more of the how the details. How is this going to work? It's a different type of questioning. 
And when the angel explained it to her, it made sense to her. It made sense to her, and she said yes right away. Huge act of faith. This was unprecedented. She said, yes, behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May be done unto me according to your word. What about you? When the Lord asks you to do something, how do you react? Do you look at it like a wonderful invitation and an opportunity to advance the kingdom of God? Or do you question? Or doubt? Or give the Lord conditions? Or stipulations? I know I do. I do it all the time. I call those days Zechariah days, where the Lord will nudge me to do something, and I'll question him, and I'll ask him, and I'll go, and I'll do it. And sometimes it works out, and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it seems that whatever I do doesn't matter. And that hurts. And I question God again. Now some days, I feel the Lord leading me to do something, and I'll stall, or I'll argue, and I'll dawdle. And sometimes, I flat out say, no, I'm not going to do it. And in some cases, I find out later on that my inactivity has caused a negative impact on someone's life. That hurts worse. And then I question myself. Thanks be to God, I have not been struck mute yet on those Zechariah days. But you know, we have merry days too. Some days I have merry days where I feel the Lord nudging me to do something, talking to me, I, I listen, I say yes, I go, I do it, and the kingdom of God is advanced, and it's great. Sometimes it works out just right. It's okay to question God. We just need to be careful how we do it. Mary didn't know all the details. She knew something was going to happen, she said yes, she was all in, but she didn't know all the details. And you know what? It's okay for us not to always know the details. It's okay to question the Lord on how. He's going to lead us and guide us in whatever he wants us to do. To be sure, you can count on that. But it's when we question that God is God, that's when we can get into trouble. That's when we can have our Zechariah days. We may not be as full of grace as Mary, but we can definitely hear the Lord speak to us and respond and say yes to whatever he would have us do. And we can have these wonderful Mary days. But in our Zechariah days, God is with us then too. Because it's in the questioning, and the arguing, and the doubting, and our misunderstanding, and sometimes shaking our fist at God, asking why. It's in all of that that we find him. It's in all of that where we have a relationship with the living God. And it is there that we find the love and the grace and the ability to say to the Lord, whatever he may ask of us, <coughs> may it be done unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death.